Hello and welcome at Book Lovers Companion. My name is Edith and right next to me is my lovely co-host, The Chattering Teacup. Hello. And here with us for this episode, publisher extraordinaire, Andrew May. Hello, Andrew, and welcome at Book Lovers Companion. Hello, thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. Like I said, publisher extraordinaire, you founded your publishing house in March 2020. Hearing yes. this and reading this, you did not expect what happened next, did you? No, um, that's <laughs> true. I mean, it has been a, a fairly short amount of time. Um, and yeah, we're very surprised and very pleased with how it's grown so far. Um, we've, we've signed 20 authors so mm -hmm. far to the Spectrum mm -hmm. and 50 books. So some of authors sticking around with us as well for quite a few books, which is mm -hmm. always a, a reassuring sign. Um, so yeah, we're very happy with how it's gone so far. Um, we've met lots of wonderful authors. Um, we've, we've developed authors and hopefully grown some of their own skills while also learning a lot as well. So mm -hmm. it's, um, yeah, it's, it's really been eye opening and a, a, a really enjoyable experience so far. Mm -hmm. And you wrote or you write on your website that you are an author yourself and you became a publisher. What was the main reason? for you mm. to start your own publishing house? Yeah, so um, so Spectrum is founded by myself and Carl, who is my father. Um, we both wrote a lot of books, um, some in LGBT mm -hmm. and some not LGBT. Mm -hmm. uh, and we always found it was a much easier experience getting signed for the non-LGBT books, even after we'd signed, say, four or five books. Um, and we had those under our belt. Getting those LGBT books signed was always a lot more difficult, and noticeably, just because they included gay characters or lesbian characters mm -hmm. or whatever it may have been. Mm -hmm. um, and even with publishers that we'd worked with previously, uh, we found that it, they were reluctant to sign it because there's not as big a market for it. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we were just thinking, well, why isn't there a market? I mean, anyone reads books with straight characters so why can't anyone read books with lgbt characters yeah. and that was really the idea that that made us start it that and we wanted to create a better experience for people than we were receiving ourselves as authors um so we, we do publish exclusively lgbt books mm -hmm. um and we found that the lgbt community is very supportive of each other so the authors they they get so much more support from other authors than, than say, non-LGB authors do. They don't consider each other competition as mm -hmm. much. You know, mm -hmm. there's a lot a lot of um, help amongst each other and trying to grow each other. Um, so it's as well as um, signing these books and authors, we, we feel like we're growing a, a really strong community between authors as well. Um, so, that yeah, that was the main idea. And we think so far it's it, it's going really well. Um, as I mentioned, we've we've got um, 20 authors and, and 50 books so mm -hmm. far. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just the ones who have, who have signed. I mean, we, we get probably around 10 to 15 submissions a week. Mm, that's a lot. Um, so we are very busy. We're mm -hmm. very busy indeed. Um, and we, we don't want to just churn out lots and lots of books just to try and grow mm -hmm. the business that way. We, we do try to be quite selective of what we publish. Um, primarily because we do want to give our full attention and and commitment to each book that we sign. So uh, typically we'll, we'll agree to publish two books a month. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that, that unfortunately means we do have to reject mm -hmm. quite a lot of submissions, uh, which is always painful to do, especially when it's people who are already receiving, you know, more rejections than usual. But we the ones we've signed so far and that we're working with, we, we really – throw everything into it we we work with them on editing and cover design and formatting and mm -hmm. we're always at hand for for help with marketing and that kind of thing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as you were an author before you were a publisher mm. did becoming a publisher too somehow change the way you work when you write a book or at least your view uh yeah i don't have any time for writing anymore unfortunately <laughs> <laughs> um so since we started, um, I, I've written a book um, that's still just sitting on my computer. I haven't done anything with, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> so I do, I do fully intend to, to get back into that at some point. But yes, um, 
I mean, I always think that to write, you have to read a lot. If you mm. don't, if you don't read a lot, how can you write a lot? How can you write well? Um, and since becoming a publisher, I've, I've been reading considerably more than I ever have before. And, and I think reading works from such a diverse group of people who submit to us. It, it, you do learn a lot. So there's, there's so many different writing styles and different mm -hmm. characters that people come up with and different, different stories that are based on their own lives. And it's, yeah, it is, it is quite eye opening. And I'm sure that when I can devote a bit more time to writing, that is going to, that is going to help my own writing as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the biggest surprise when you started your business, I mean, you woke mm -hmm. up one day and decided, okay, I'm starting my own business. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, <laughs> Well, the biggest surprise, well, there's a couple I can think of. Um, so the, the first would probably be getting the first submission. Oh, yeah. okay. Obviously, when you haven't got uh, a library, a catalogue to speak of, um, getting someone to trust you with their submission, something that they've spent so much time working on, um, is huge. Yeah. And then and then getting to meet with these people, oh, virtually, obviously, but still getting to meet with them and, and hear them speak about their, their projects passionately and, and to trust you with it is Yeah, it was, it was surprising and it was it was wonderful. Mm. Um, and then from there, having bestsellers, um, mm -hmm. always a, a wonderful surprise. Um, having books win awards, mm -hmm. um, all all fantastic surprises. Mm -hmm. And for the authors as well, I'm sure. Mm. And the biggest challenge so far in your still young uh, company? Mm. Um Probably just the amount of work that has that that came about so quickly. Mm. Um, from the first submission, it it really just kind of grew very rapidly. So I think just just really trying to to set out how we can how we can devote our time as best we can to these submissions that we that we sign, um, and really understanding the amount of work that there is involved in taking a book from from a submission to you know a full complete perfect book is um it's a lot of work i'm sure yeah. you know yeah. yeah yeah absolutely um so yeah i think that was the biggest surprise just just um how quickly it would grow and and how much it would involve from us mm. and i mean you took you took quite a risk i mean kind of think of it you said okay it's it's all about quality because you publish two books a month not more mm -hmm. because you want to stick to the quality yes i, I mean still It has to be, or it is, I suppose, a have been a huge risk starting this whole thing. Yeah, I mean, there's um, there's certainly a lot of not just time investment, but monetary investment as well. Yeah, mm. um, yeah, yeah. It's a risk, but um, so far it's been going well. And and Carla and myself just believed that that we we could do it better. We were in the position of being authors, which I think a lot of publishers are not. You know, they they see it from their side of. They need to they need to get these numbers, all these mm. all these targets have to hit, which I mean we have of course as well. But our, our main focus is to work with authors as closely as we can, mm -hmm. um, just to make sure that everyone is happy with with what we produce for them, rather than just you have to sell this number of books by this date, mm -hmm. etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. We're we're less strict on that. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, Teacup and having first for a person account of an author who's very happy with you. So, <laughs> uh, I mean, it works for the authors. Well, it's, it's always wonderful to hear. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. As far as I know, all, all authors are very happy with, with what we're doing. Um, like I said, a lot of them have come back for a second, third, mm -hmm. in come, some cases, eighth book. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. oh. Yeah. So, yeah, we're, we're really happy and we're happy that our, our authors are um To, to quote one of them, making their dreams come true, which was uh, a really touching sentiment to hear from one of our authors. <laughs> and when you take on an author and work mm -hmm. on a book, do you personally work on, just you work on this book or do you and Carl work together on a book? Yeah, Carl and I work together. So um, one of us will read the book first. Um, usually it's Carl, but I, I do my fair share as well. And then if, If one of us is happy, the other one will read it. If we're both happy, we'll we'll inform the the author that we're happy to sign. From there, it's usually Kyle who's doing the editing, mm -hmm. uh, me who's doing the cover design, mm -hmm. um, and then I usually do the formatting as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And was it yeah. a steep learning curve? I mean, since you were an author and not uh, involved in the traditional publishing business yourself, meaning you weren't working for a publishing house, I suppose. Mm. 
Yeah. How steep was the learning curve for you? It was it was fairly steep, but it wasn't as steep as I thought. I've been having I haven't worked for a publishing company, but I've worked with them. You know, having my own mm-hmm. books published, mm-hmm. so it's taking the good things that they do and rejecting the bad things that they did, and and just trying to to try and make sure you know we we, we do everything as well as possible. So yeah, things like cover design, um, there's a lot of research in that constantly. So you're always having to see what what the market looks like, what the trends are for all, all the different genres, and because we're we're not a say a thriller publisher mm-hmm. or a romance publisher. We publish all genres in LGBT. So there's a lot of a lot of research for for what mm-hmm. covers are like in different genres currently, um, and, and that is important to make sure that covers do look modern for for most mm-hmm. books. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That mm-hmm. they don't look out of place in a in the bestsellers list where they hopefully end up. Oh, I I think so. We we did look at the covers and teacup. We like them, don't we? Yeah. Absolutely, they look fantastic, and oh, thank you. they look like books I would uh, take, take up, up in a in a in a in a bookshop. If I would see them in a bookshop, I would pick them up and take a look and see what is on the backside and read the first few pages. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, well, I think that's about as high a price as you can get for a book cover. That's exactly <laughs> what you want to happen: people to pick it up. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. you said the. The mistakes or the things the traditional publishers did wrong, in your opinion, especially in this very niche uh, mm. part of writing. Uh, can you tell us, in your opinion, what would you say are the biggest mistakes, mm-hmm. in your opinion? Sure. Um, well, I think um, any author would say that any book they produce is a huge passion project. There's so many hours put into it. It's It's, it's almost all consuming the amount of time and effort you put into it. Yeah. And then when you you get signed by a publisher, obviously it's fantastic over the moon, but then things start happening. Like um, they want to change certain things that you don't want changed. Hmm. Um, uh, and sometimes things are done without your involvement as an author as well. So they will, they will step in and say, this needs to be done. It's not, can we work together on changing this mm-hmm. in this way? It's, it's done for you a lot mm-hmm. of the time. Mm-hmm. Um, and then that really kind of puts a sour taste, I think, after the initial high of, of getting a deal, for then things to just start going downhill from there with, with things being done out of your control. So we we don't enforce anything on any authors. We mm-hmm. with, with cover design, for example, we'll suggest things that we think look good, we'll suggest themes, but we're not going to say, no, you can't have this cover. You know, we, we want us and our authors to have an equal Mm-hmm. decision on, on all mm-hmm. things like that including editing we're not just going to start changing the story mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. anything like that and that, that was always the thing that, that got to me most when i was um, working with publishers mm-hmm. and you said all kinds of genres that's something i also found quite interesting when i looked at your authors and your books on your website and uh since you are this niche publishing house there are a lot of those man well, lot Maybe it's a bit <laughs> over the top. Some niche publishers in the United States who do, I got, I get the impression, correct me if I'm wrong, who do get a little bit um, very narrow, narrow in, in what they uh, think is or uh, demanded by their readers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that's true. Um, and I think they're, although obviously they've got a very niche part of the market that will keep going back for book after book. It's, it's hard to grow that way. You, you're only ever going to have that very narrow part of the market. Mm. Um, and, and our whole thing for starting this company was that we want everyone to read LGBT books. So we accept every genre. So there's always going to be something for someone, whether you, you read fantasy or sci-fi or horror, you know, we'll always have books of every genre coming. There'll always be something new that, that everyone will be able to enjoy. Mm. The, is that more difficult to work with uh, if you have yes. more surprise but those are more interesting maybe it, it, yes it's both yeah <laughs> for example i i didn't used to read uh, much fantasy or romance mm. that wasn't really my favorite genre to read um <laughs> <laughs> but since starting spectrum um i found that i can enjoy reading any genre so very uh, surprised I, yes yeah yeah um because i you can always now enjoy a genre for even if you don't particularly enjoy the the recurrent themes you can enjoy how well mm. it's written you can enjoy the growth of the characters 
Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, yeah, definitely. Mm. Yeah, and uh, making it harder again, yes, because um, perhaps you, there's more to understand from the the details of each genre. So um, the tropes of romance, for example, there's a lot of different ones to be aware of. Um, how to market them to their their following, that kind of thing. It's yeah, it's a lot to learn, but it's a lot to enjoy as well. Yeah, absolutely. And do you think that not only those traditional publishers, but sometimes I get the feeling, especially those niche uh, publishing houses, they do underestimate the audience, maybe? Yeah, I think so. When um, when they've got ideas in their head for what will work, but they're not testing things that might work. Mm. Yeah, they're, they're definitely, in my opinion, losing potential there. Uh, and then authors perhaps getting rejected because this specific thing isn't quite... Mm-hmm. as they think it should be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if, if they're not testing the market and, and trying different things, then uh, there's going to be a point where each book they publish is not that dissimilar from from other books they've, they've published. Mm-hmm. Do you also think that you said, uh, you, you of course you have to look at what's working, what is not working. Um, do you think that sometimes publishers make the mistake of following too much what is uh, the fashion of the day? Potentially. I mean, um, it, it, if you do that too much, there'll be a point where every cover looks almost the same, mm. uh, which, which does happen in some genres. So that thriller, they, mm. there's, they regularly, uh, the, the bold yellow font in front of a cottage or something, for example. Yeah. It's, uh, so yeah, that, that can happen as well. Obviously being too much either way is, is, is always going to potentially cause problems. So hopefully we're, we're right in the middle there. We're, we're offering something for everyone and we're not rejecting things because it doesn't fit a mm. certain viewpoint that we have. Mm. Um, the only reason we we typically tend to reject submissions is is either because we think we would need to change things mm-hmm. to make it into a, into a good book, which we, we don't want to do. We don't want to force things on people. Mm-hmm. So it's either that or just unfortunately the, the quality of the writing would just require so much editing from us that it would take away from, from other projects. Mm-hmm. 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 The question also is, you said at the beginning, and we spoke about it as well, Teacup, before we came on the show, that people should read all kinds of genres. I mean, it's a, mm. you said LGBT uh, publishing house, but why not also for uh, the main audience? Also, the question is publishing books where a, let's say, relationship between two men or two women um, is not the main, is not the main plot yeah, because m- my example was um, romantic comedies. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, I have read them. They're fun sometimes. So why why also, do publishers yeah. expect um, heterosexual people just to read heterosexual relationships in any, in any way, and not the other way? Because the other way around it works. Yeah. It does, and they, and they do expect that. Um, but that's, like I said, we found that when we were trying to get some of our own books published, um, and and a lot of our books, it is fairly subtle that there's a a relationship, but it shouldn't really matter if it's a mm. two men in the relationship. Um, I understand some people might not want to read any uh, perhaps gay erotica if they're not if they're not gay themselves, but but people still read straight erotica. So mm. personally, I, I would I would exactly. recommend that people at least give it a try. Yeah, I don't always want to read lesbian erotica either. So, no, but then um, a lot of our books are not erotica. There's um, <laughs> yeah. um, there's some ones that, we, that have really beautiful relationships. Just yeah. to um, just to mention one, uh, Echoes of Ashington uh, by uh, Rowan McKemsley. It's um, it's a historic but also current story. Two timelines mm-hmm. um, with a, a really touching relationship between two characters mm-hmm. in wartime. Mm-hmm. Um, Yeah, it's a a beautiful relationship. Mm. Yeah, and what about this not being the main plot? I get the impression that, again, those niche publishers uh, shy away from Mm. it, where the plot, be it, I don't know, a thriller or or, or, uh, suspense or whatever, or fantasy is the main plot, Mm -hmm. and the relationship is, yeah, it's there, but it's not what it's all about. central. Yeah. 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 Yeah, um, so I, I had written a book myself like that previously, where it, it was just his relationship, and um, it was it was even actually just a, a present relationship. He wasn't in one at the time, but he had had a, a boyfriend before in the past, 
and even that caused issues with it that I found. Mm. Um, and, and it's a shame because I'd, I'd like to think that most people wouldn't care if there was um, a, a, a gay relationship that wasn't even anywhere near the the focal point of of the book. But like you mentioned, um, publishers do seem to think that people will think that way. Mm. But, but I do think it is more publishers thinking that way and assuming other people will just because they do. Mm. Do you think that people like Val McDermott or Marihanna have opened the field or opened the eyes of the readers in this regard? Or a the little publishers? Bit? Or, the, or the publishers, maybe? A tiny a little, bit? Um, a little. I think it will take a lot more. Um, <laughs> but a good start. Yeah. yeah. I just need more and more and more. Mm. Yeah. Mm. What makes a good... Or do you think a successful book from the publisher's point of view? So whether you, do you mean from a traditional publisher's point of view or from our point of view? From your point of view. <laughs> from our point of view. Um, <laughs> so when we're reading for submission, it would be that uh, I want to just keep reading it. Of course, that's the that's the main thing. You, d you don't want to stop reading it. Uh, but then for it to actually become successful, it Obviously, we want to sell books, we want to get bestsellers, but we're also looking for good reviews from hearing from people who've read it and, and how they felt about it, if anything changed in the lives of them, because we have had people people say things like that in reviews to some of our books, that the authors are, are so happy to see their book and to hold it in their hands and and to, after all the hundreds of hours of work, to have it there, I'm sure you know. <laughs> yes. Um, so, yeah, it's not just the sales, it's it's... The um, I think the the happiness it creates for other people on the way, be it readers or authors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And how important is the plot for you? I mean, you mentioned that you've listened to uh, my conversation with Elsu on mm -hmm. editing, and she starts with the story, with the plot, then the characters, and then the very last step is the writing style. Yeah, I think I actually go from it from the complete opposite way around, to be <laughs> honest. <laughs> um, the, because the writing style is what I see first. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. the, the plot, I have to read a lot more to to get to that. Mm -hmm. So the writing style, immediate, is what I'll notice. Mm -hmm. um, so the, like, the kind of language they use, the, the grammar, everything like that is what I'll notice first. And then, yeah, plot last. Okay. Uh, but but still important. It's just it's the last thing that we can fully evaluate, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Interesting point of view completely. Yeah. <laughs> And as you said, that's your view of what makes a successful book. What's in how in what way is it different to a pub regular publishers? Well, I think with a regular publisher, they're they're going to be working with a lot more authors than we are. Um Uh, that then by it necess necessitates um, less time spent with each mm -hmm. with each author, lesser relationships perhaps developed, and less feedback from them about how they found the whole process. And then they they're, they're required to to be more about the sales. They have to be there. The bigger mm -hmm. ones have shareholders. They have targets. They the, you know they're they're required to be about the sales. So it's the complete opposite way around, which works for a lot of authors obviously they a lot of authors make a lot of money with them um mm -hmm. but the ones that don't unfortunately um mm. often don't have anywhere near the same experience and it's that there is a really big divide between top and bottom for not just sales but also the the whole experience with them mm -hmm. i find mm -hmm. And what about marketing i mean marketing getting the books out and getting the word around is also a huge part of publishing, of writing and publishing. How how did you get around this one? Because uh, it is, and it's, it's difficult for yeah, yeah, for small publishers as well. It's it's a lot harder than for a big publisher. Obviously, they can spend a lot of money on marketing. We we can't. Um, we have a small budget, um, but our authors typically have main responsibility for marketing. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean we don't do any. We we still do. We have our socials. We do ad, we do advertising that kind of thing. Um, we have a uh, an arc team to review books for us, that kind of thing. Um, but typically, the the main responsibility will be with the authors, and that that is something that we ask people when they submit to us as well. What your experience with marketing is, how willing you are to get involved with it, mm -hmm. and then we're there as support. So any questions they have about marketing, we we'll be more than willing to help and just do everything we can. 
and we, we typically advise authors as well, which was a, a piece of advice I got when I first started writing was that if you want to sell a lot of books, you've got to spend half your time marketing and half your time writing. And it is true. And I think a lot of people who have only written perhaps their first book or a couple of books, they don't realize how much work that there is required mm. to, to market a book successfully. Mm. So we, we, we try and make everyone aware that it's going to be a lot of work. Mm. What are the best strategies for an author? So the best strategies, I think, to um, just be seen in as many places as you can. So on all your social accounts and to to be present in your own advertising. So a lot of people use like um, a mock-up picture of a, a paperback with a, a nice background, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but we typically suggest to be in your posts, mm -hmm. um, to speak to your audience, to to do videos of, of giving readings from your book or reading out reviews and thanking people for them. We think, especially with LGBT books, people are buying into the author as much as they are the book. Mm -hmm. And people want to find out more about authors that, they, that they've enjoyed a book from. So just, just being present in your marketing, I think, is one of the biggest bits of advice. Mm -hmm. Do you think that <clears throat> sorry, LGBT readers are more loyal readers than others? Yes, I do. Yeah, um, and just just by nature, there being fewer LGBT authors, when when someone finds one they really enjoy the books of, yes, I think um, they typically go back for more, mm -hmm. especially LGBT series books. Mm -hmm. I think um, typically do very well. Obviously, mm -hmm. that's the case for non LGBT as well. But for for books in that in that community, they um, they do really well as a series if people start to to find out about it and enjoy them. Mm -hmm. And genre wise, I mean, we spoke about genre. There's a, a whole episode would be on shock we could spend on genre. But um, also in the LGBT community, do you think that crime and romance are the main interest for the readers? Um, I'd say crime, not as much. Romance, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, fantasy is a big one. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's a huge one, actually. Um, Yeah, a lot of people are really into being into those. We have a series called the Mythologay series, which is Greek mm -hmm. mythology, mm -hmm. but with yeah. gay retellings. That's by uh, BJ Irons. Um, and yeah, they're very successful. Um, yeah, so I, I think romance, uh, fantasy, um, and then probably the comedy or science fiction. They're oh. both really popular genres as well. Mm. The Greek mythology, I blamed it on Cena. Don't you? Yeah, but that, that had women. Yeah, true. Yeah, okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah, got me there. I mean, I'd read it too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're right. Of course, of course, of course, of course. I mean, do you think, or did you experience any differences between, I know you have at least one uh, author from the United mm. States, Differences in writing, in style, in plots or characters between European writers and American writers? Uh, well, most of our authors are American. Oh, um, okay. Yeah. I just, um, saw, uh, just looked at the names and the pictures. So. <laughs> yeah, uh, most of them are American. Um, but typically, not really, no. Okay. Um, we've had a couple of submissions from um, German authors as well. Um, oh. And I think... The main difference with the German one would be that their grammar is excellent, <laughs> uh, consistently. I mean, we've only had three, um, but all three have been written brilliantly, grammar-wise. Okay. Um, but other than that, between the others, no, I, I wouldn't say there's there's much difference. I mean, there's they're typically going to be set in places where people are familiar with, oh, so yeah. okay. m most US authors are going to write about places oh, in the US, okay. similar with the UK and Australia, where we have a couple of authors from as well. Um, but other than that... I don't think there's much difference, no. Mm. So the Germans don't have to worry so much about their school system then, after all. <laughs> no. Seems no. not, no. no. Seems not, no. <laughs> Especially for a second language, it's uh, it's very impressive. Yeah, we, you get that hammered into your head, I think, like we did. Well, I did at school. Do you not pick up? Yes, but I learned more after school. Grammar-wise? No, oh, but our teacher was very language. strict. Our, our teacher was very strict on that part. I have to say. Well, anyway, yeah. Advice. Uh, I mean, being now a publisher yourself, having written books mm. as well, and anyone who wants to write or has a manuscript on his or her computer, what would be your advice if they want to get it published? 
Yeah, so to edit it as as well as you can first, mm -hmm. um, no publisher expects it to be perfect, not even the, the big publishers. They, they know it's not going to be perfect. Mm -hmm. um, and also to if, if there's a particular publisher that you're interested in sending it to, have a look at their guidelines, see if they have any grammar uh, styles that they request people write to and then try and follow those. That, that would be a, a huge benefit if you're just trying to submit to to one really important publisher for you. Um, a second thing would be to be as positive as you can in your in your submission in the whatever text you add to it. We find a lot of people um, come to us saying things like, I've, "I've sent this to twenty publishers already, and I keep getting rejected. I hope you'll be the one to accept it." When when people leave with that, obviously it's it's, it's not really setting the right tone to start with. Um, yeah. you, you shouldn't mention the places that reject you first. We don't need to know who's rejected you. Just um, <laughs> Yeah, thank you. You yeah, thank it. you again for us being at the bottom of yeah, your exactly. list. Well, that as well. <laughs> yes. Um, and just, I think I would suggest people to, um, in a way, treat it like a job application. So, don't just send the same thing to each to each publisher. It's like if you're sending the same CV and cover letter to all these different companies, mm -hmm. um, try and tailor it a little bit and make it more personal to who you're writing it to. And, and include a, a cover letter, if you like, as well. Tell us more about you. Tell us um, about your book, why it's important to you, why you wrote it. Mm -hmm. um, and then all those things will, well, I think, will really help people's chances because we already know more about you. And um, yeah, as much positivity as you can include in your submission, mm -hmm. generally. Mm -hmm. And Andrew, if you could go back to the year 2020, mm. forget about the whole pandemic for a moment. What would you change or what would you do differently? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure, to be honest. Um, I think we're quite happy with how everything has gone so far. But um, I think, yeah, I'll, I'll think about that one and come back to it at the end, perhaps. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, yeah. We're, we're generally really happy with how it's all gone. And I don't think there's been anything that's that's happened that we've thought, okay, we need to either not do this anymore in the future or do it this way instead. Obviously there's, there's small things like um, editing practices and um, updating our style guide and things like that. But, but typically everything has, has gone really well. So um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I think um, perhaps just the, it's something that authors experience, I think is uh, imposter syndrome. <laughs> um, and I, I, I had that as an author myself mm. and then as a publisher as well, thinking, can I, you know, can I really do this? I'm just, You know, I'm just some author, you know, I'm, I, I, why should I be publishing people's book? Why should they be coming to me? So I think perhaps just um, trying to give myself some more assurance that actually, no, we, we can do this. We've, we've learned from it really well. We've, we've produced a lot of really quality books, we made a lot of people happy. And just to remove that imposter syndrome and, and mm -hmm. get more confidence in, mm -hmm. my own, in my own abilities. Mm -hmm. How long did it take you from the first thought, maybe... We are gonna find a publishing house mm. to being ready to um, take on submissions. And what were the biggest uh, challenges? Six months, I think. Um, It's fairly quick. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, a, a challenge, I suppose, was uh, the website was a, was the first one. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not particularly skilled at web design, uh, but I did build it myself. Mm -hmm. um, so there was a lot of uh, learning about obviously web development and how to make a good looking site and functional and then search engine optimization. Um, which we'll just drop in that we are page one of Google as well, which I'm very personally proud of. So building the website, first of all, um, and then I suppose I, I didn't have much understanding of the legal side of it either. So mm -hmm. then producing a, a, a contract and making sure that's all watertight and ab above board. Um, mm -hmm. And then think about how we're going to get people to to sign up to us in the first place and how we'll present ourselves on social media. Well, well I think that they were the main concerns when we first started out. And then, and then we were just getting involved with um, as many authors in the community as we could. So we were interviewing people about their books we had coming out and helping them promote their books that we hadn't published, but just to, just to help um, get the word out about us and mm -hmm. get people hearing that we even exist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, you said before that you encourage authors 
uh, to work on their marketing strategies and you have a few ideas what they could do and you advise them mm -hmm. on that. And have you ever planned or do, have you ever thought about um, doing your own, let's say, readings or such a thing for the authors as a part? Uh, under under the, the umbrella of your of your publishing house, yeah, that is something we'd like to do, um, and definitely something we plan to do with series as well, because mm -hmm. uh, I think that could work quite well with series. It's mainly, un unfortunately, just uh, a question of timing to do it at the moment, mm -hmm. um, with just the amount of volume of work that we that we have. But yes, um, that's definitely something we we intend to do, uh, either in the form of. Uh, live Instagram videos mm -hmm. or reels um, is, is, I think, how we're going to pursue that in the future. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Good idea. Because I, I'm just asking because other other uh, smaller publishers do it as well. Yeah, uh, yeah, it is something we're definitely interested in uh, in starting to do soon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good to know. Good to know. Uh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you get to finish your book, that's sitting <laughs> more or less on your desk. Um, <laughs> And you publish it yourself. Uh, would you be able to be objective enough? Yeah, I've been wondering whether I would publish it myself or not. <laughs> um, I mean, whether it would look bad that I try and get it published elsewhere, or or <laughs> would it be would it look like favoritism if I published it and then marketed it myself? It'd be difficult. Um, What do you have a publisher? Yeah, I'm not. Sure. I think I probably would end up publishing it myself. Um, Hmm. But I'm I'm not 100% committed to that just yet. Um, well, why not? I mean, people found their own publishing houses to, to do exactly that, don't they? Yeah, that's right. I mean... They do. Yeah, I just I, I feel a bit guilty about it somehow. <laughs> like taking up a, a slot that we could have published someone else with, you know? Hmm. Oh, I think um, you shouldn't. No. Yeah, it, it, it's probably something I will do. It's just when I finally get around to, uh, to finishing it. it, it's mostly done. It's just, uh, you know, crossing a lot of T's and dotting a lot of I's. And, mm -hmm. and all the other work. And do you also have contacts or do you work together with other, let's say, um, independent bookshops in the UK? Because there are a lot of independent bookshops, especially shortly before and during the pandemic. We were surprised because here in Vienna, we got the feeling there are not that many around anymore. Yeah. They have closed down even before the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, there are a few in London, uh, which is where, where we're based. Mm -hmm. we, we have uh, spoken to a few of them. It, it's quite difficult to get into a lot of them because most of them have very limited shelf space and there's a lot of mm -hmm. competition for it. But there is a particular shop that I won't mention just yet that, mm -hmm. that we're hoping to be in in the next couple of months with mm -hmm. a, a few titles. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, fingers crossed, sometime later this year. Yeah. But the, I suppose the big ones are harder. Aren't they? I mean, the, the chains like, like Waterstones and so on. Yeah, yeah, that's, um, you need to be with a, one of the really big publishers to stand mm -hmm. much of a chance to, to get in there. Yeah, I, I think that's unlikely. But a lot of our books are um, online with Barnes and Noble, at least, and hopefully some of those might, might make it elsewhere into physical stores as well. Mm. And in terms of uh, selling your books, mm. What is your experience these days about paperbacks and Kindle and what what is it people buy? And what about also again the question of different uh, the audience between Europe and let's say the United States? Yeah, um, so the US is our biggest market by far. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's usually about 80 to 85 percent of all sales. Uh, and then most of the rest is the UK mm. and then The rest is is fairly small percentages between Australia and the rest of the EU. In terms of formats of books, it's quite evenly split. We find between paperbacks, ebooks, and Kindle Unlimited. Mm -hmm. um, that's a big revenue stream for a lot of our authors as well. Mm -hmm. But it, it it is really like thirty percent, give or take, for for each of those. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, paperback books are still are still selling quite quite well uh, as far as our books go, and mm -hmm. um, quite surprisingly actually. Mm -hmm. And what about, I mean, how do you set the price? I mean, I, yeah, it's it's a question I often ask myself because when you look at, at publishers like Bella Books and so on, 
when you look, especially when you look at the Kindle editions and you look at the price, okay, we are unfortunate here in Austria because of the prices and so on, but they are quite high. Yeah. And yeah. Um, I, I quite often see Kindle titles for about £10 and it's that's like, wow, that's, yeah. that's crazy. And uh, sometimes more than the physical books, which just doesn't make sense in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Pricing, yeah, we, we try to be quite fair to readers with the pricing. Most of our ebooks are three pound ninety nine, four euros forty nine, uh, four ninety nine dollars, so, which is I think below average. I, I mm-hmm. think um, but we don't want to make people think that the books aren't quality, but that seems to be a, a good place for where uh, there's a, a still a good royalty for the authors, but a, a a fairly easy price point for people to feel that they can afford to buy the book, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, especially in obviously the current the current circumstances mm. of the cost of living crisis and everything. Yeah, well, I suppose it is. And you mentioned you got submissions from um, German authors. Yes. What about translations? Translations, yeah. <laughs> um, we've actually got one coming out soon. Uh, our first translation. Um, Yes, it's been translated into Spanish, mm. um, which does come with some problems. Oh. <laughs> um, I mean, obviously, I don't, I, I can't speak Spanish, so I, I'm trusting the translator that it's mm-hmm. it's well translated, that nothing is lost. Um, the author also doesn't speak Spanish, so she's mm. also trusting mm-hmm. the translator. Mm-hmm. But yes, it's um, yeah, it's been an exciting project to work on. Mm-hmm. Any other languages? You would like currently to... no. <laughs> okay, no, um, it doesn't mean we wouldn't be open to it, of uh, course. And if there's a um, a demand for it, which we felt there was with this book, um, then yeah, we'd be we'd be happy to to do the same again in the future. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think Spanish is probably one of the biggest markets. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think it's the biggest EU one that we have. Yes, yeah. There's uh, South America, mm. some sp- Spanish too. Yeah, um, Some Spanish. Most of them are Spanish. Yeah, but not all. Yeah, but Brazil. But the rest. I mean, uh, German. Right? Nearly ninety million. <laughs> okay, nine million, ten percent LGBT. <laughs> well, well, we will hopefully soon have some German authors, even if the the books are in English. Hopefully, uh, that. Yeah, happens. I think they do. Some of them do, but they also sometimes I get the impression that the German speaking audience prefers books in German. I got the impression in, maybe in I'm general, completely because wrong. because it's easy to understand. Oh, oh, yeah, true. It's the first language. Uh, do you also think, or is it even a, a thing for uh, publishing houses to work together? One publishing house with another? Yeah. It's not happened as far as I know. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not really sure how that would work, what the, um, mm-hmm. what the process would be. Mm-hmm. I think typically they communicate with one another very little. Mm-hmm. Um, I know I've... Um, not directly stolen authors from another publishing house, but we've had quite a few people come to us from one particular mm. publishing house that I, I won't name, obviously. Um, but they've been unhappy with the service there, and they've um, they've started to charge for things like editing. Mm. Um, so yeah, I've, I've had a quite a large number of submissions from from mm-hmm. one particular, mm-hmm. and I, th- I think um, that I've obviously only breed animosity with that publisher. I don't think there's any any way that they would consider mm-hmm. working together, no. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, do you, you said that the the authors in your publishing house, they, are, they collaborate or they uh, support each other mm. uh, quite well. Do you think that can be a problem sometimes in the traditional publishing world, that there is too much of a competition between authors? Yes, sometimes. Um, I, I think there can be, but I think most people, you know, they, they read books from lots of different authors, so it, there might be some imagined competition, but whether it actually really affects any of their sales or their, their mm. readership, I don't, I don't think so. Mm. Um, obviously, for some competing authors are, are very very famous in their, in their genre, people are going to prefer one or the other, but I think most people are still going to read books from that genre if they like it no matter who it's who it's mm. written by mm. um so typically I, i don't find that that happens mm-hmm. no mm-hmm. crime writers are very supportive of each other also we have yeah heard. i mean <laughs> yeah we, we've had authors at 
do review swaps for each other. So they'll, they'll read each other's books and, and, mm-hmm. and review them. They'll help give each other ideas and, and help market each other's books as well, which is always mm-hmm. nice to see. Mm-hmm. Did you find in any way a um, general difference in um, the genres, women write or men write or read? Yes, yeah, I, um, I do find that, um, so not all of our authors are LGBT themselves. Some of them some of them are, are not in the community, but they still write those books. And all of those people are women. So all of the male authors we have are in the community, but not all of the female ones are. So we, <laughs> we have a few female authors who, who write gay books, for example, but not being gay themselves. We don't have any, I, I'm sure I've never had a submission from a man writing a lesbian book. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it only goes the other way. Um, <laughs> other than that, no, I, I don't really think so. Um, we've had thriller submissions from women. We've had romance submissions from men and mm. fantasy from both. And no, it's, it's, it's quite a nice mix, actually. Oh. Do you think that the LGBT community, the women, are they, when they write crime, are they as bloody as their straight counterparts? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Even bloody. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what I thought. That's what I thought. I always, I always find that the women tend to write bloody It's stories be- because women are often un- underestimated. Yeah, maybe, maybe, or they can yeah, put uh, to paper what they can't. No, nah, nah, forget that. <laughs> forget that thought. <laughs> Scratch that. <laughs> That's true. I mean, I, I know there is some. Uh, you know, people think that women don't write as much violent stuff but no they, they do yeah uh, oh yes 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 yeah. they do yes they do absolutely. scary stuff mm-hmm. yeah yeah absolutely yeah. i have to come back to my question you said you will you will <laughs> might you might be able to answer that is there something you would do differently looking back um honestly no i don't think there is <laughs> no not as and then that might sound big-headed um <laughs> I, I'm, i'm i'm not typically a, a big-headed person but no there, there isn't um um it's it's just been a a really great experience so far and we we would just if if it went back i would hope that it would be exactly the same as it has been so far i wouldn't want to do anything differently to risk it not turning out as it has done so far mm-hmm. um no no mm-hmm. I change. maybe maybe what you have done differently maybe just a thought that you should have started it sooner that's a good point <laughs> yeah that's a good point yeah <laughs> Um, yeah, I could have done it sooner, perhaps uh, by a couple of years. Um, but um, yeah, mm-hmm. uh, overall, um, with, with the amount of time that it's been in existence so far, we're, mm-hmm. we're incredibly happy and, mm-hmm. um, and, and proud of, mm-hmm. of how it is so far. Mm. I don't want to make the pandemic a, a thing or a point again, now that mm. we have more or less overcome it. But was there ever a moment during this time when you thought, oh dear, What will what will happen? Um, not not so much, no, um, because we we work with people all around, all around the world. Most of our authors are US, we're London, um, so that it wouldn't really have changed much for any of that. With all our authors, we we meet with virtually. Mm-hmm. Um, unfortunately, we haven't met with any of them physically yet. So no, I I don't think so. No, mm-hmm. it's um, or no. maybe it was a bit of a good thing because mm. people turned more to reading. Well, that's true. Um, I I personally read a, a lot during the lockdown. Yeah, yeah. I, I think things like um, a lot of social media book trends started around that kind of time. So there's things like um, I'm not a big fan of TikTok at all, but there's things like Book Talk, which started around that time, as far as I'm aware. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it seemed like perhaps reading became more more popular to be seen to be doing. If that makes sense, mm-hmm. um, it wasn't so much of a A private thing. It, it, I think it became more social. It's something for people to talk about when there was nothing else going on. Mm-hmm. Um, book groups with, with you know, found more people joining them on Facebook, that kind of mm-hmm. thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, yeah, perhaps it was the the right time for that. Mm. Do you have any idea if the trend to read more mm. continued in the last one and a half years, or did it die down a bit? Um, well, just from our sales point of view, um, it's increased. Yes. Yeah. That's good. Um, yeah, I mean, we we haven't found ever by month by month that um, there have been fewer people reading our books. It's always increasing, mm-hmm. uh, which is a wonderful sign. So yeah, yeah I think I think it is still growing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
That's great. Since we spoke about bookshops, what about book fairs? Book fairs, yeah. So th there are a few in the UK, but um, I think that's re the reverse, unfortunately, of what we were just talking about with the pandemic. I think they've shrunk a lot and got a lot mm. smaller, and um, it's not something that we've had any involvement in yet just because uh, I think with the time investment it would have, we, for us it would be best spent on other things. Um, they're, they're just not as well attended it, in, as far as I'm aware anymore. Um, but instead there are the virtual, the virtual side of that instead, which has been growing. Mm -hmm. um, I, I would like to go to a few in the future, if anything, just to, just to meet people in the community and speak to them about what we do. For example, with, with pride, we're, we're hoping mm -hmm. to um, in London next year, we're hoping to have a, a part in that to mm -hmm. promote spectrum and our books. Mm -hmm. So yeah, hopefully in the future. Yeah. yeah. That brings me to my question. What will you do in the future? I mean, aside from book fairs, there are also these events. I mean, in the United States, you have these big events uh, for uh, LGBT writers. Mm. For crime writers, you have them in the UK, where we go, mm. Bristol and so on. Will there be something like that? Like you said, Pride, you plan to be part of that next year? Yeah. Yeah, hopefully we'll be part of that next year. Um, these are the things we're working on. So um, there's this company based in the UK that um, they they work with young LGBT authors who are either writing their first book or want to start writing, and they 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 run workshops on developing key skills for writing. So whether it's writing styles or characters and uh, all, all aspects of writing, and we're hoping to start working with them soon to either perhaps teach some workshops ourselves or to um, or to have a system for people who have who have done well with with their courses to then come to us for for more further guidance and publication. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of our authors are first time authors, mm -hmm. uh, and we're we're definitely keen to work with with more of those in the future. And hopefully, this relationship will will allow that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No more questions. So, Andrew, is there anything else you would like our listeners to know? Yes. Yeah, so we're also starting an imprint. Um, called Enigma Books. Mm. So that's for, um, so I know we were speaking earlier about um, publishers that only produce one genre. This is one of them. <laughs> um, this is a, a thriller publisher only. It's for LGBT books or not. It's for, for, for either way. Mm -hmm. um, but it will be having the same the same ethics and the same guys ar around Enigma as we do with Spectrum. So we're not going to be forcing people to do certain things we're not going to be rejecting books because we don't think it fits this specific thriller genre mm -hmm. so that's we've already got a couple of authors signed up to that mm -hmm. and we'll be having our first release later this year Ooh, yes okay thriller something no, I mean, no names just yet oh still something to look forward to absolutely yes <laughs> oh, looking forward to it already so andrew Thank you so much for joining us. It was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. And the same, yeah, it was a really great speaking with you. <laughs> Thank you. You did enjoy this episode as much as we did? Then hit subscribe and don't miss the next episode. Also, make sure to follow us on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. If you like to support us and buy us a coffee, you can do so via Buy Me Coffee and other platforms. You can find all the necessary links in the description. Until next time.